Welcome to Toyota Time with Timmy the Toolman and Sean. Today we have our buddy Greg back over at the Timmy the Toolman studios. And if you remember Greg, we're trying to figure out his misfire problem on his first gen Tacoma. We've done a lot of stuff to try to figure this out. We've thrown parts at it, but we're doing our best to try to figure out what is causing this misfire. Today, we're not gonna be throwing parts at it. We're gonna be doing some diagnostics. And what we're gonna do today is check his ignition timing. I'm gonna use the factory service manual as a reference. I'm gonna show you the pages related to this procedure in the factory service manual. We're in the engine mechanical section for the 5VZ FE V6 engine. And it talks about using a handheld tester or an OBD2 reader, but we're not gonna be doing that. We're just gonna be hooking up a timing light and we're using the factory service manual to figure out what the timing should be when the vehicle is in neutral and at idle. It also talks about connecting terminals with this diagnostic port, but we're not gonna be doing that either. What we're mainly gonna be paying attention to is this information at the bottom of this page. It talks about what the timing should be when you're at idle with the transmission in neutral, it says that the ignition timing should be somewhere between three to 19 degrees before top dead center. And they say that the timing mark will move between three degrees and 19 degrees. The first thing we need to do is we're gonna get onto the crankshaft pulley with the 19 millimeter socket and I'm gonna use this big flex head gear wrench ratchet, half inch drive, and I'm gonna turn the engine clockwise till I see the timing notch on the crankshaft pulley, also known as the harmonic balancer. I'm gonna go right down in here. I'm gonna go in front of the fan and kind of push the fan along, rotate the ratchet into position and feel for it slide onto the 19 millimeters crankshaft bolt. It's on there now. And now I'm gonna start turning the engine clockwise because this is the direction it turns. I'm looking down here at the inside of the crankshaft pulley for the notch to show up. So you can see the little white notch on the crankshaft pulley. I painted it white with a little paintbrush so it's easier to see. You can use some white out on that. If not, then just get a little bit of white paint on the tip of a fine tip paintbrush and paint it. This is gonna make it so when you hook up your timing light, you'll be able to see the notch on the crankshaft pulley easier because without the paint on it, it's gonna be really hard to see. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna hook up our timing light. I bought this timing light off Amazon. I'll put a link in the video description for it. And it's a pretty simple tool. It's got some batteries that go over here and it actually came with the necessary batteries. And then it's got this clip and you hook up this clip to the spark plug wire to the number one cylinder. You have this button that you depress to get the light to start flashing like a strobe light to where you can see where the timing is. You're looking at the white notch on the harmonic balancer in relation to the timing cover marks behind it. So let's go back to the engine and get this timing light hooked up. So this spark plug wire right here is going from the front cylinder hooked up to the coil pack. This cylinder on the front side of the passenger side is the number one cylinder. We're gonna hook up our timing light clip to this wire right here. So you just capture it, you just go over it and hook it over and just let it rest. When it comes to the wiring, you just wanna be careful that this doesn't come down and get caught up in the fan or the pulleys. So you'd want it draped over the radiator and out of the way. Greg is gonna start the engine. He's gonna be at idle. He's gonna have the transmission in neutral. I'm gonna be coming in from this angle, coming from the driver's side, pointing down at the harmonic balancer. I'm gonna be looking at the painted mark on the harmonic balancer and see where it's lining up with the timing cover marks that are behind it. This works as a strobe light to slow things down to where you can see where that timing mark is. And we're looking to see that the timing is gonna be somewhere in that three degrees to 19 degrees before top dead center. Word of caution, before you go to the next step of starting your engine, make sure that you took your ratchet 
off of the crankshaft pulley so you don't have a catastrophic event and sling a ratchet into your engine or maybe into you. Okay, Greg, go ahead and start it. So it looks like, according to checking the timing with the timing light, that Greg's engine is within the spec for the timing, somewhere in that three degrees to 19 degrees before top dead center. The next thing I wanna do is I'm gonna take the upper timing cover off or loosen it enough to where I can expose the cam sprockets. And then I'm gonna rotate the engine with the crankshaft pulley bolt, lining up the notch with the crankshaft pulley with the zero on the timing cover behind it and then I'm going to check to see that both of the camshaft pulley sprockets are lined up with their respective timing marks to make sure the timing is correct in that regards because maybe a previous timing belt job the person didn't do it right and it's maybe one tooth off or maybe the belt has stretched over time and maybe it skipped a tooth who knows I'm just going to verify that everything looks good with the timing marks with the camshaft sprockets and with the crankshaft pulley. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove this upper timing cover. To get it pulled away enough to where we can expose the cam sprockets, I'm just gonna loosen this upper radiator hose clamp and I'm just gonna push it back this way to where the cover will slide over it. Then I'm just gonna disconnect the spark plug wire clips from the timing cover, just slide them forward and then I have to work on getting all these 10 millimeter bolts loose. You got two on the top, you've got ones on the side, and then ones below. From experience, the one in the bottom left is gonna be the hardest to get to, but what I'm hoping for is that I'm gonna get all of them loose with the exception of that bottom left one, and then hopefully be able just to pry the cover back enough to where I can expose the cams to where I can see the timing marks. All right, so I'm just, taking a pair of bent nose needle nose pliers I'm gonna compress the clamp and pull it back a little bit out of the way you could disconnect it all the way but then you're talking about losing some coolant and the idea is that I'm just gonna be able to slide the cover over and not disturb this and not lose coolant I'm gonna next just slip off these spark plug wire clips off of the timing cover And then now all of these are loose. Next, I'm gonna get my Milwaukee cordless ratchet and I'm gonna start zipping off all these 10 millimeter bolts. So I have my Milwaukee cordless, a short 3 8 extension and my 10 millimeter short socket. These should not be on that tight, so they should zip out pretty easily. This one I'm not gonna be able to use the extension on. The next one I'm gonna go for is right here. It's right to the left of the oil dipstick tube and this wiring harness. I'm showing you now because I'm gonna to have to get the tool in there and we're not gonna be able to film it. So I'm using my short extension to get to this one. And you can see right now, I've already got some pretty decent movement out of this. I'm gonna go for another one now on the passenger side. So the next one I'm gonna go for is on the passenger side right next to the power steering reservoir. So that's five of the bolts and it sort of looks like I am gonna have to go for that lower left one to be able to pull it back far enough. It doesn't seem I'm gonna be able to get a good view of the timing marks. So I'm gonna have to go for that bottom left one. For the lower one on the passenger side you can see that i'm getting my ratchet and extension below the power steering belt and it's going below the electrical connector 
for the cam position sensor and it's down in there it, it's going to be really hard to film so that's exactly where it is i'm using the same short extension with another really short one like an inch long to get in there i'm able to turn the ratchet but still clear the fan blade this flex head ratchet is enabling me to be able to go at a little bit of an angle because if it was a regular ratchet i'd be hitting the fan so it's a little bit hard to get in there as you can see to get to that bottom bolt so i got it loose and I captured it with my magnet because it's just really hard to get your hand in there. And this was the combination of extensions I used to get in there. I used this shorty and then this one that's even shorter. It's a little bit over an inch. And then to get it out the rest of the way, I used a medium length extension, just got my hand in there and started twisting it because I couldn't get the Milwaukee in there too. There just wasn't enough room to get it in there. Now let's see if I could pull this thing back far enough. I might have to take this electrical connector loose. So the last thing that's really hanging us up is this electrical connector for the cam position sensor. It's got a little push tab on the front. You depress it and then you can pull it off. It's a little bit hard to get to, but I was able to break it loose and then slide it off. So now you can see I have the male part of the connector disconnected. Now we need to try to slide this back. The cover is gonna hang up on the upper radiator hose a little bit, and it's also gonna hang up a little bit on the engine dipstick tube. You just have to pull it back, pry up the radiator hose a little bit, pull it back a little bit more. Now you can see that we've exposed the cam sprockets to make sure the timing marks are correct, that when the crankshaft pulley is lined up with its respective timing mark, both of the driver's side and passenger side cam sprockets are lined up with their respective timing marks. So same thing as before, I'm gonna get onto the crankshaft pulley with my half inch drive flex head ratchet with a 19 millimeter socket, and I'm gonna turn the engine over to where I get the timing mark on the crankshaft pulley lined up with the zero on the timing cover behind it, letting me know that that's gonna be a top dead center. But once I get that one lined up, I'm gonna check both cam sprockets, and if they're not lined up yet then that means i got to turn the crankshaft pulley over another 360 degrees bring it back to the zero because for every revolution of the crankshaft pulley the camshafts turn 180 degrees if you don't see your timing marks for the camshaft sprockets lined up after you first get it to the zero that means that the timing marks are pointing downward at the six o'clock position, you have to turn the crankshaft pulley another 360 degrees to bring those timing marks up to the 12 o'clock position. I got the notch on the crankshaft pulley lined up with the zero on the timing cover. Now I'm gonna see where the cam sprockets are at. And then I could see that I got lucky and I got it on the first try. So both of the timing marks for the cam sprockets are up at the 12 o'clock position. So now I'm gonna analyze the notches on the cam sprocket are lined up with the timing cover behind it. Because this is such a tight area to get into, it's gonna be hard for me to show you the timing mark. But if you get your head in here, you can see where the notch is. I could actually see a little bit of a notch right here. And what I did is I took a red permanent marker and I made a little mark to let me be able to see it better from the top and I did the same with the other side so on this driver side it's a little bit easier because I could pull the timing cover back far enough because the upper radiator hose isn't inhibiting me from doing so and you can see the notch right here they actually have some yellow paint on it what I'm going to use as a tool to check to see if this mark on the cam sprocket is lined up with the notch on the timing cover behind is I'm gonna use a little feeler gauge that you would use to check valve clearances because it's nice and short and I can get it in there. Using my feeler gauge as a straight edge, I'm lining up the notch on the timing cover behind and then I'm lining it up with the mark 
on the cam sprocket and again I put a little red mark on the top of the sprocket for me to be able to see it easier and I'm lining them up and it does look like to me that they are lined up on both sides so it doesn't appear that somebody previously did a timing belt replacement and did it wrong or that potentially the belt got slack in it and jumped the tooth so we got all the 10 millimeter bolts that hold that timing cover back in place for that bottom one on the passenger side it's really hard to be able to get it in there without dropping the bolt a trick that I learned a long time ago is you just take a little piece of tape whatever tape you have this is some electrical tape I put it on top of the socket and then I force the head of the bolt onto there and what that does is secures the bolt to your 10 millimeter socket to where you can then work it into that tight spot without risk of dropping it down somewhere onto your skid plates or somewhere else where you have to go looking for it. We have all the bolts started here and then I'm just gonna cinch them up snug. If you're worried about a torque spec for this, I remember the torque spec is pretty light for this. It's something like 88 inch pounds, but all you gotta do is just choke up on your 3 8 ratchet or maybe a quarter inch ratchet and just get them snug because all these bolts are holding is just this plastic timing cover. So the main thing you wanna do is don't over tighten them and strip them. Once you have all six 10 millimeter bolts snugged up, slide your spark plug wire clips back onto the timing cover. And don't forget to hook up the electrical connector for your cam position sensor. So slide that on and snap it in place. I heard it snap and then just pull back a little bit, make sure that it's securely on there. We want to get our constant tension clamp for the upper radiator hose back in position. Compress it and then rotate it back to where it was. These constant tension clamps are much better than the old style screw down clamps. Don't make the mistake of getting rid of these constant tension clamps if you're ever doing any work on the front end of your engine. All right, we're all done with this job. We showed you how you can check your timing with a timing light and we showed you a way how you can take off the upper timing cover so you can expose the cam sprockets to double check that all the timing marks are lining up. So when the crankshaft sprocket timing mark is lined up with the zero on the timing cover behind it, and then you should be able to see that both of the cam sprocket timing marks are lined up with their respective timing cover marks behind them. That lets us know that there's nothing up with the position of the cam sprockets. In relation to the crankshaft sprocket, the belt hasn't jumped a tooth somebody that did a timing belt replacement before didn't mess up the job we know that that can't be the reason why greg is having some type of misfire problem so that's another thing we could check off the list the other benefit for showing you this technique of taking the timing cover off is maybe all of a sudden your engine had a fatal failure it just stopped dead it could be because your timing belt broke. If you just stop dead while you're driving and you can't figure out what's wrong, we just showed you a way how you can take that upper timing cover back far enough to where you can inspect the timing belt to see if it's still intact. It's a way you can inspect the belt, say you bought your rig used and you didn't get any good maintenance records and you're wondering, wow, I wonder what the condition of the timing belt is. By pulling back that timing cover, you can get a good look at that timing belt and see if, hey, maybe I should replace it or maybe, hey, it looks pretty darn fresh. It looks like one of the previous owners replaced the timing belt, so I'm good to go. With all that said, we thank you for watching Toyota Time with Timmy the Tool Man and Sean and special returning guest, Greg. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. If you have any questions or comments, do that below. Take care. Bye-bye. Sick mods and sick diagnostics. I don't have <laughs>